Hey everyone, this is Jody with Grace and Faith, and today we are jumping into our series at topic number three of what you need to know in regards to panic attacks. And everyone loves a good story, and I promised you the other day to share um, a story with you that was one of my most scary moments in my life, but also one of my most embarrassing um, and also funny looking back on it. And let me let's just dive into that story because it goes with what we're talking about today. My husband and our family, my kids, we were out to dinner with um, some friends of ours and their kids, and we were at a local restaurant just enjoying one another's company, catching up on life. And as we were eating, um, I don't remember if I noticed or if my friend noticed, but somehow attention was brought to my hand was blue, like completely blue, looked like it was had no blood flow going through it, like no oxygen was in there, like my hand was blue. And so, you know, like I stretched it out and I was like, hmm wonder what's going on, but I tried not to let it bother me, and we continued on with our conversation and dinner, and a few moments later, her husband, he didn't get into the first conversation, and he was like, oh, your hand's blue, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, then at that time, we realized that both of my hands had turned blue, and at that point, I was like, what is going on, and all of a sudden, I started to feel dizzy. I started to feel sick to my stomach. I started to have chest pains, and I felt like something was really, really wrong with me. And so that sent everybody else into a, a panic mode of what is going on with her. And so 911 was called, tables got shoved out of the way, chairs were shoved out of the way to make room for me to be able to lay down and relax as I heard the sirens of the ambulance coming. And as much as I did not want that scene to be taking place out in public or with my kids watching, I was watching my kids freak out because they didn't know what was going on with mom. I was thankful that the ambulance was on its way because I truly felt like I was dying. Like something was really wrong with me and I needed that emergency help. So in runs the EMTs into this restaurant. We're in the middle of the restaurant. Mass chaos. Um, and the EMTs like, you know, they're checking my vitals, checking to see what's going on. And all of a sudden I see them like slow down and they're not as panicked as they were. And I see an EMT like open up like one of those wet wipes, sanitizing wipes, right? And he starts wiping my hand. And I'm like, why is he doing that? What is going on? And then he holds up the wipe to me and he was like, what have you been doing with your hands? Like whatever's on your hand is some sort of dye. And I could not, I was like, what are you talking about? Okay, like my hands are dyed, but like, something else is wrong, something's wrong with me. And so they began to talk to me about like, have you ever experienced panic attacks or um, anxiety attacks as some people call it? And I was like, no, I don't suffer with that at all. And um, that's not what this is, like something's wrong with me, we need to go. And he was like, your hands are just died, there's nothing wrong, we think that sent you into a panic attack. And so like they pack up and they leave and I'm I'm stuck in the middle of this restaurant and there's like, mess all around us right like all the tables are screwed up everybody's now like what the heck just happened like EMTs came in she's still here like and I was super embarrassed because now everyone's staring at me inside of this restaurant like what just happened to this chick and then I was also really confused and scared because I had no clue I still at that moment had all of the feelings that I had before my heart was still racing my chest felt tight um, you know, like that adrenaline, like I felt like I just wanted to cry um, because I knew something was wrong with me and nobody else would recognize that something was really wrong. And so, um, you know, we gathered up our things and we cleaned up the space and we ended up leaving. Our friends were very gracious and so supportive that day. And we went back to their their house and, um, you know, they talked with me to make sure that I was okay and, you know, talking about anxiety attacks and that um, this could have very well been an anxiety attack. And they just kind of helped guide us through that because my husband and I had never seen or experienced that before. And looking back, that was one of my very first, especially public, um, panic attacks that I had, especially to that severe that I had no clue what was happening around me. Like, I, I really honestly thought that I was dying or had a true emergency. And so, um, if you have anxiety attacks or you have a loved one who has anxiety attack, please know that it's not... Um, something that they're putting on to get attention. They're not, um, they didn't put themselves in that position on purpose. Something has caused their anxiety to become overwhelming for them. And then it causes a physical reaction. And for me specifically, that physical reaction causes my anxiety to go even further higher because now 
my health is concerned. It's not just like whatever caused the panic initially. Now something's wrong with me physically, which causes the cycle to even um, increase in intensity. So some of those um, symptoms of a panic attack, sorry, my cat is attacking me. Uh, panic attacks can be racing heart, feeling weak or dizzy, tingling or numbness. That was something like, so when I did have the blue hands, I physically on my left arm, everything started tingling and going numb. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, something is really wrong with me. I'm um, feeling like having, getting sweaty or having the chills. Um, like I said, the chest pain, breathing difficulties, feeling a loss of control and not being able to control your thoughts or your reactions and um, just feeling very scared in the moment because you're not really sure what's taking place. Typically, a panic attack la lasts um, less than 10 minutes. Sometimes it can go up to about 30, but sometimes those symptoms can continue on even past that time. Um, once I, you know, realized that my health was okay, my initial panic began to decrease and I, you know, the symptoms decreased, but I still had some of those symptoms for up to 30, 45 minutes that day. Cause I remember they kept saying like, are you okay? And I'm like, I still feel off. Like I just felt really out of it. And um, I don't know if I was just confused at what just happened. I don't know if my, um, those symptoms just were, you know, they, they can linger. So just um, be aware of that, that even if the initial fear that they had is under control, that some of those symptoms can still linger around and affect the way that they are interacting with you or those around them. Um, during that time that they are having a, an episode, they are very scared and anxious about what is taking place, whether it's the situation itself or, like I said, now that they're, they're in the middle of an anxiety attack, that makes you even more paranoid and afraid because now you have everyone looking at you wondering what's going on and you're you can't control yourself but now all of that pressure on the outside of you even adds to that anxiety so if you are with someone experiencing a panic attack it's best if you are prepared and, and kind of know how to help them and this varies from person to person on how you can help them um, these are just some tips that I have ran across or that work for me um, one, stay with the person and help them calm down in whatever way that is. We're going to share some of those tips, but just help them know that they are safe and that you are with them. Um, offer, some people do take medications for this, it, for an anxiety attack. So if you do know that, then offer them their medication to help them through that. Move them to a quiet place if you could. Like I said, when I'm sitting in the middle of a restaurant and everybody's eyes are on me, that even makes me even more anxious. And so if you can just quietly remove them to a, a quiet space, maybe more secluded where people's eyes aren't necessarily on them, sometimes that can help calm them down. Don't make assumptions about what the person needs. Ask them what they need. Because um, sometimes you can just assume that they need whatever and that might trigger them even more. Or for me, like when I am in, in heightened anxiety, um, I tend to lash out. My anger comes out more because that's just how my anxiety comes out. So don't just assume because then they might like, you know, react not so nice and then you may take offense to that as well. So just ask them, what can I do to help you? What do you need in this moment? Um, sometimes if someone's in a, an extreme panic mode, speak to them in short, simple sentences. Don't bombard them with everybody talking to them at the same time or asking them to do too much um, because they're already confused and scared and overwhelmed. And so the simpler you can make it for them, the easier they can focus. Um, that was going to be my next one is to try to help them focus on something. Um, some people will say like focus just on simple tasks like um, putting your hands together and focusing there. For me, I, it really helps me to focus on breathing. I found breathing techniques such as taking in slow, deep inhales and holding it and then exhaling. You're getting that oxygen to your body, um, but it also makes me refocus my thoughts to my breathing. And so my whatever caused my anxiety to raise, um, for instance, I had a, a slight anxiety attack a couple weeks ago. Um, my husband was at work and there were gunshots going off at our house and my anxiety shot up and, and I ended up texting like the gunshots are one after another after another and I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And so I'm texting my husband, but I was like, I can feel myself going into an anxiety attack. And so he's, you know, not home. My kids were asleep and so I was like, okay, I've, I've you know, like I have to process through this. 
And so I really focused on my breathing. And so my mind initially is going to, what are those shots? What's going on? Are they coming? Like, do I, you know, is it near my house? Do I need to protect my kids? Do I need to move? And so my, my mind goes to what ifs and how we talked about yesterday, um, all those negatives or how am I going to prepare for the situation? And my mind just keeps going. It's already in a like constant cycle, but now it's like really spinning and I'm starting to get that increased breathing. And um, so if I slow down my breathing, it brings more oxygen into my body, but it also makes me focus on that rather than all of the millions of thoughts racing through my mind that's increasing my panic. And then I can slow down and I can try to think rationally. So breathing for me is a huge, huge technique to help me come back down. Um, if they're a Christian, pray with them. Praying with me is a huge help or um, reciting scripture with me is a huge encouragement to know that um, my strength doesn't come from me, but from the Lord. And so, um, you know, if they are a believer and a follower of Christ, then, um, you know, speak those truths into their lives and over them. Sometimes things that you say can even just help them. Um, just telling them, like, you are safe. You are okay. You can get through this panic attack. You know, um, tell them that, you know, like, Ask them, like, tell me what you need. We talked about that before. Remind them, concentrate on your breathing. Even breathing with them is helpful. And remind them to stay in the present, to focus on what is actually taking place, not to be focused on what's going to take place or what could happen in the future or what has happened in the past, but to be present in the moment. Um, and while panic attacks can be very scary for everyone involved, for the person experiencing the attack and for their loved ones or for the people around, know that it can be more manageable if you are prepared and know what to expect. The first time that you have an anxiety attack or your loved one has an anxiety attack, it's scary because honestly, like nobody knows what's going on. When they told me I was having an anxiety attack, I thought they were crazy. Um, and I just kept thinking something else is really wrong with me. And then you start to question, like, what is an anxiety attack? What triggered me? What? And so um, it's, a, it's really overwhelming at the very beginning. So the more you learn in order to be prepared if it should happen again, the better that next set situation is going to be. And so, um, like I said, each person is going to vary in how their panic attacks um, appear to other people and also how they control it and how they can bring themselves out of it. So m the biggest part is for you to not ignore the situation with your loved one, but to just confront them and say, hey, like, if your anxiety is raising, even if it's not an anxiety attack, but you know somebody even just struggles with anxiety themselves, be like, hey, how can I help you during those moments when your anxiety is raised? Because not everyone has panic attacks if they have an anxiety disorder. So sometimes my anxiety will just raise and I I've learned my anxiety is raised rather than not knowing what's going on. Um, and so like the other day I mentioned I was with my family and my anxiety, I could feel it rising up and I just had that, that feeling like I got to get out of here. So I removed myself from that situation. And so my husband needs to know like sometimes I'm going to have to remove myself from that situation so that I can do some of the techniques that I have learned in order to bring my anxiety back down. Um, and there are certain things that I've told him like you can help me by doing this. Um, or that what you know some of the, the examples that I've given to you before so you know don't ignore the situation with your loved one they want you to understand them uh, so many people have told me like thank you for doing this series because it's hard to explain and it is hard and that's one reason why I was nervous about doing this series because it's so different for each person but people with anxiety want you to understand them and understand that um, the how you can help and so bring it up to them if somebody posts or someone you know deals with it, don't be afraid to confront them and just be like, hey, I love you. How can I help you in the moments that you are in high anxiety or having an anxiety attack because I want to help you. So the, the better prepared you are, the quicker and easier you can help your loved one recover from their attack. And so um, I hope this was helpful for you today. I hope that you never really have to use it, but um, hopefully that you can be more prepared to help your loved ones. I hope to see you tomorrow on our next topic. Have a great day, everyone.